Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Mrs. Leffler's Whiteboard. <laughs> I hope you guys had a good week, tried some new things. We had a little bit of excitement around here with a brand new fridge because the old one broke. The new one was too big. We didn't return it. We had somebody come over and raise the cabinet that is above the fridge, which is a little crazy. Um, also, somebody ran into a tree backing out of a driveway babysitting this week. So, uh, yeah, staying at home hasn't been boring. Uh, first things first, here's our review. I want you to parse and diagram this sentence. Pause the video, do that, and then come back and find out if you were right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and parse and diagram. The subject of this sentence is dog. It's a noun. My hungry are adjectives. What is being said about dog? It devoured. What did it devour? Some spaghetti and meatballs. Now this whole thing is the D-O because it's one dish. And the word some is modifying the whole thing, spaghetti and meatballs. If uh, we said the dog devoured some spaghetti and one meatball, it'd be two different D-O's. But in this case, Spaghetti and meatballs is one dish, so it's one D.O. Okay, so let's parse who jumped onto the table. This is a subject uh, pronoun. Jumped, jumped who or what. There isn't anything there, so it's a V.I. Onto is a preposition. The table is the object of the preposition. Now we have yet he ignored the salad. Yet is a fanboy. That's a coordinating conjunction. He is subject pronoun. He what? Ignored. What did he ignore? The salad. So salad is your D-O. Okay. Now diagramming takes up a little space. My hungry dog, who, which claws all the way down here. And you're not going to see the prepositional phrase if I don't raise that up. On to the table. Okay. Okay, what did he do? Devoured. What did he devour? Spaghetti and meatballs. How much? Some. Okay. Now, yet he ignored the salad, we connect those with the verbs. So, coordinating conjunctions go on online like this. Um, ignored. I like to write the verb first to make sure I connect these dotted lines with the verbs. Okay. This is how we parse and diagram this sentence. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, now we're going to jump into the new stuff. It's actually a review on adjectives. Okay. So, oh, this is the wrong chart. Your adjectives chart, this beautiful thing. Okay. You need this, and we're going to be talking about the different types of adjectives. Okay, now, what do adjectives modify? They modify nouns, pronouns, and what questions do they answer? What kind? How 
many? Which or whose? All right, these are the questions that adjectives answer. Um, now, the next thing that we're going to do, if it's hard, it's because you're not doing your quit at close enough. Okay? So if you haven't done any quit at close and you're, you're one first tour, that's cool. Okay? You can save them for next year. But if you're sec or tour two or tour three, you should be doing at least a little bit of quit at close. Okay, so if you haven't done any yet, give them a try. I'm actually going to do one at the end of this video, so you can stop watching before that if you're not ready for quit at close yet, or save it for another day. But anyway, what I want you to do is tell me whether the adjective in each sentence I show you is descriptive, possessive, or limiting. A descriptive adjective answers the question, what kind? A possessive adjective answers the question whose, and limiting answers the questions how many or which. Okay. Um, now, if it's descriptive, I want you to tell me whether or not it's positive, comparative, or superlative. This is all on your chart. Okay, so the wall was painted green. What is the word green doing? Okay, it is describing the wall. Okay, so it's descriptive. Is it positive, comparative, or superlative? Okay, so if we look at the words good, better, best, okay, good is positive, better is comparative, because you're saying one thing is better than the other, and best is superlative. Superlative means like the best description okay so if you can say that green is saying it's better than something or saying it's the best of something then it would be comparative or superlative but it's not doing that so it's just positive okay most adjectives are just going to be positive all right the next one my mom bought me a book we're looking at this a uh. Now, does it answer the question, what kind, whose, how many, or which? It answers the question, how many, so it's limiting. Okay, now this one, that is Cole's jacket. What is the word Cole's doing? It's answering the question, whose, right? So this is a possessive adjective. Okay, my, your, her, all of those are possessive adjectives too. Okay, now the last one. Cotton is softer than burlap. What is the word softer doing? It's describing cotton, so it's descriptive. Okay, remember the good, better, best? This ER is telling you that it's softer, right? It's better in softness than burlap. So this would be comparative. Okay, superlative would be softest, in case you were wondering. Okay, so those are the different types of adjectives copy that adjectives chart this week. Okay. Um, that is all we're going to do for adjectives. Now, another chart we're going to look at this week is the verbals chart again. Okay. Last week we looked at infinitives. The first thing when we use an infinitive as a noun, like this, we put it on a little pedestal, and the two goes on a little diagonal thing. Okay? This week, we're going to look at participles. 
Okay, we're skipping gerunds, but we're going to do those next week. Okay, a participle is a verb usually ending in ed, ent, or ing, and is used as an adjective. Okay, flying machines are fascinating. What kind of machines? Flying machines. So that is an adjective describing machines, and then it's going to go on a, a angled line like this. Okay, so let's practice some of those. There are two types of participles. Present participles, where you have the verb plus ing. Okay, like this one. Don't wake a sleeping baby. This sentence is not saying the baby is sleeping, using sleeping as a verb. It's describing the baby. Okay, another one is a past participle. This is the verb plus ed still being used as an adjective. Okay, the injured catcher sat on the bench. So it's describing the catcher with the word injured. So now the verb isn't a verb anymore, it's an adjective. Okay. Here's another one. In the past, the delighted girl received a present. How are we describing the girl? She's delighted. Okay, so being used as an adjective. Now, you don't want to mix these up with an ing verb being used as a verb. Okay, so these are all participles being used as an adjective. This one right here, the child had cried when he fell. Okay, this is using a helping verb and then the past participle, but it's being used as a verb phrase. Okay, so what did the child do? The child had cried. This is your verb. Okay, same thing here. The children were laughing. So this is a verb helping, and this is your verb intransitive. Okay? Now, I'm going to test you, see if you can tell what's a verb phrase and what's a participle being used as an adjective. Okay? The running dog chased I'm sorry, my camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. The running dog chased after the duck. Is this a participle or a verb phrase? If you guessed participle, you are correct. The dog was running after the duck. Now what is it? This is a verb phrase. Okay, this helping verb will give you a clue. Okay, two more sentences that look similar. Which one has a participle or which one has a verb phrase? All right, this one is the verb phrase. This one is the participle. Okay, those are participles. Remember that we diagram them like this. Okay, this is an SVL. P A. All right, and swimming is going to go like that. Okay, so copy that verbals chart again. And we're going to go right into our sentence structure for this week. All right, do you remember what kind of sentence this is? 
All right, hopefully you said S-V-L-P-A. How about this one? This is another S-V-L-P-A. I am human. This is S V L P N, right? Human can rename I. Now, these are the only sentence patterns with linking verbs. Okay? Also, the predicate nominative or predicate adjective is a complement, just like OCA or OCNs. It's diagrammed to the right of the verb with a slanted line dividing them. Okay, they all look like that. Now, let's do a compound complex sentence with this kind of sentence structure, okay? Because we've done compound complex before. We did it last week. We're going to do it again with a different kind of sentence structure. Okay, now I need to cut this a little bit because I can't parse. Over the words hanging off the whiteboard. Okay. The running lion who is growling is a carnivore and he seems hungry. All right, go ahead and pause the video. See if you can parse and diagram the sentence on your own. And then come back and I'll show you how to do it and see if you were right. Okay, so this is a compound complex sentence. You need a lot of room for your diagram. Okay, so what is this sentence about? The lion, the running, are adjectives describing it. Running is a participle. But we still diagram, we'll label it as an adjective. Okay, camera, please stop. Okay, the running lion is, verb linking, a carnivore. Carnivore is a PN, uh, is an adjective. Okay, who is growling? Who is an SP, VL, and growling is an adjective describing, okay, so this is another I'm really sorry about my camera, guys. This is another participle, but it is still labeled as an adjective. In this case, it's a predicate adjective. I hope this didn't keep happening last week because I wasn't looking at my computer screen as often as I am right now. Um, anyway, and is a coordinating conjunction. He is an SP. Seems is a verb linking. It's in that list on your verbs chart. And then hungry is an adjective. Okay. Now, let's diagram it. If my camera can focus. Don't know why it's doing this. Okay, so what kind of a sentence is this? This is an SVLPN S-V-L-P-A, S-V-I, compound complex sentence, okay? So, I'm going to scoot this over. This part of support is going to go like this. The running lion is diagonal line for a PN.
Okay. Now. Who is... Okay, when your PA goes on the same line as your subject and your verb, and it's a participle, and you're going to put it on a pedestal. Like this, growling. Okay? Okay, the running lion, who is growling, is a carnivore, and sorry, this is so close together. He seems hungry. Okay, I hope this one makes sense. Um, now, we're basically done with this today, unless you want to do a quit at quote with me. It won't take too long, but if you want to stop right here, go right ahead and have a fabulous week. If you're going to stick with me for the quit at quo, go ahead and put your sentence on the quit at quo sheet without the who, which clause, the same one that we just did. And the whole thing except for the who, which clause will fit. Okay. If you want to, you can do the running line as a carnivore and stop there as well. And this is going to be kind of hard for you guys to see. I wonder if I can make this any closer. Okay, I don't know if that helps very much. Let me know if you guys just totally can't see this very well. And I won't try to do a quit at quo on camera again, but we're going to give it a try. Okay, so the first word is the. It's an adjective. It's an article adjective. So I just put a check mark there for article. Running is an adjective. It is a participle, but it's positive because it's just describing the lion. So I put positive there. Okay, lion is a noun. So for number, I put an S for singular. For type, I put com C for common. And it is a concrete noun. You can touch and see and smell a lion. Okay, so I'm going to put C-O-N for concrete. Is is our verb, so it's going to go right here. The first line, the type. It's intransitive. Actually, no, it's linking. Sorry. Linking. Present, past, or future tense. This is in present tense. It's in simple form. Number, singular or plural. Is is for a singular noun. Person, first, second, and third. We're talking about a lion. So this is third person. Voice, active or passive. Well, we're saying that the subject is doing the action, is doing the ising. So it's active. And the mood is indicative. It's just indicating something. Okay? A uh, is an article adjective. So the only thing we have to do in adjectives is just fill out one of those lines, not all three of them. Now, carnivore is a noun. So we're going to do the same thing we did for lion. It's singular. It's common. And it's concrete. Okay, and is a conjunction. They're way down here. Coordinating, subordinating, co correlative, or conjunctive conjunctive, um, all we have to do is put that it's coordinating. Okay, he is a pronoun, second section here. What case is it in? 
It is in nominative case because this is the beginning of a new independent clause. It's the subject, so that's nominative. It's third person. We're talking about he, which is third person. There's one of him, so it's singular. Um, we know that this is masculine because it says he. If we, it said it, we would put common because we know that the lion has a gender. If it said a table, we would say neuter because tables don't have gender. But if it is a thing that has a gender, we just don't know what it is, put common in that area. And then um, it's not an other pronoun. So that last section in pronouns, we don't have to fill that out for this one. Okay, seems is our verb. This is also a linking verb. It's in present tense. It's simple. It's singular because we know that he is one lion. It's in third person because it's about something else, somebody else. It's active. The subject is the one that seems. And it's indicative. It, the sentence is just indicating something about the lion. And then hungry is our PA. It's an adjective. So it's describing, is it positive, comparative, or superlative? It's positive. If um, the sentence said he seems hungrier than the tiger, that would be comparative. If it said he seems to be the hungriest animal in the jungle, that would be superlative. Okay, so that's our quid et quo. We didn't do that much. It's not that intimidating. And if it is, it won't be next year. Okay? All right, guys. Um, last week, one student, just one student, sent me the back of their ATS sheet. Thank you, Jared. You guys did a great job with that. Um, so everybody else, send me something. Send me a quid et quo. Send me the back of your ATS sheet. Send me a diagram. I don't care what it is. Just send me something from Essentials that you are doing this week. Okay? Email, text. I don't care. Just send me a picture of it. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Enjoy the weather outside. Enjoy staying six feet away from everybody. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.